Okay. So we are at Ross Bay Cemetery in Victoria. There's a few other people around, but not too many. I really like coming here. Someone has left a note in the tree. What does it say? It says, before we part ways, before our eyes close and night folds over, what's left of our daylight, come close. Let me kiss you into a bed of wild grass and roses, hold you in the most immersive love and passion we can imagine, because someday we'll be ashes. Okay. So when we do encounter people here, I will turn the camera just so that, you know, we give people privacy. Um, this is a place I like to come and visit. It's peaceful, there's benches, it's really like a park. There's a lot of people who are famous to Canadian history that are buried here. I think some of the more important pieces are that there's a memorial um, to some of the Asian, I think it's a Japanese memorial, is it? I'm checking with Neil, but he can't remember either. I don't know, I photographed it when we were here a few years ago. My favorite, well, favorite grave, is that a thing? I guess it is. I just made it a thing. Um, my favorite grave is Emily Carr's grave, uh, not because it's, it's not really ornate, there's no big headstone, it's really just a stone in the ground, um, flat with the earth, but she's well loved and adored, and so people leave, people leave trinkets all over her grave, little artistic things, uh, drawings, pens, pencils, because of course she was an artist. I can't remember, do you go this way and then up? Yeah. Looking for, oh wait, here's the memorial that I was talking about. Yeah, I'll go read the back side of it. Okay, yeah, so this memorial commemorates the 150 Victorians of Japanese descent who are buried in this historic cemetery beginning in 1887. During the 40s, when no person of Japanese descent was allowed to remain within 100 miles of the west coast, many grave markers deteriorated or were vandalized. This monument is dedicated to the early immigrants from Japan whose courage and endurance made our lives in Canada possible. So, I mean, one of the really shady things about Canadian history, um, just like American history, I guess, is that in World War II, when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, um, all, all Japanese people, whether they were citizens or not, uh, were forced into camps. And some people don't know about it. Um, it's not necessarily widely talked about, but I think it's a really important part of our history. There was a fear that, you know, any Japanese people would, I don't know, I guess, be against Canada based on, on their Canada, uh, sorry, based on their country's foreign actions. Agents. Yeah, that there would be foreign agents or spies or, anyway. Um, which, of course, was not the case. I mean, the Japanese people living here were just trying to make a life for themselves, like everyone else. Um, but their property was literally seized from them, their homes, uh, their boats, if they, if they fished. Um, just everything, everything they owned, they were forced to leave and they were forced into internment camps. And so I think it's really important that we recognize those things and talk about them and what they mean to who we are. So, I'm glad there's a memorial there. 
And yeah, there's there's famous Canadian politicians buried here from long ago and I don't really care <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know, so much of what we're taught in school when I was in school and you know, I'm old now, so but it was really about like white history, who colonized here, who were these people. But I think that the stories that we need to talk about and tell and hear are the stories of people who aren't necessarily. What are you trying to show me, hon? Oh. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, I don't know, Neil's on a tangent. It's so beautiful here. It's so peaceful. There's so many benches to sit on and people really use the park as a place to walk and get exercise. And I just saw a few minutes ago, loads of hummingbirds in a tree. Um, I don't usually see them like that. I've really seen them in feeders, but they're just flying everywhere. I know, I see. So I'm saying they're everywhere here. They don't, they're not gonna show up on camera obviously, but they're so, um, yeah, it's not gonna show up on camera. But they're literally darting out of these trees in and out and making the squeakiest little sounds and just diving back into the trees. Anyway, I think that there's plenty of other history to be explored around these places. Um, I do like visiting Emily Carr's grave. She's someone who, well, I think really early on sort of championed the idea. I don't know, it's horrible to say <laughs> just in general, but she really respected and embraced indigenous people and their communities and they seem to really respect and embrace her. Oh my goodness. Look at these trees. Like out of the tree, I get, I know I get sidetracked a lot. That's how I am. Out of the tree are growing all of these other limbs, even on the trunk. It looks so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And Neil's wandered off this way. Not sure what he's looking for. What are you looking for, hun? I thought it was further that way. Sorry if you hear the clinking. I'm drinking iced coffee with protein drink in it. Espresso with protein. Neil's trying to get us lost. I'm pretty sure I know where I'm going. I mean vaguely the direction, but... Okay, so we're walking between the lines. One of the things I like is that... You can go online and look at a map of the cemetery and all the rows here have, um, oh, this is very exciting. We have rabbit poop. Um, rabbit and deer are really common to see in here. The deer will come and hang out. Anyway, the rows have letters and numbers. So like a grid pattern, like the, um, rows or letters and then numbers as you go in through the graves and that way if you want to know where someone specific is buried you can simply find them that way so I'm pretty sure hers is over there Emily Carr that is um, so we're just of course making our way around Obviously, we're not going to step on people's graves. We did 
disrespectful. But I'm pretty sure, oh, I'm getting lost. Pretty sure that it's over this way, I wanna say. like a little maintenance hut and someone parked there collecting garbage and stuff. Kind of look on the map to see if we're going the right way, which is fair. Sorry about the noise of equipment there. Oh, there's deer. There's deer. Okay, we're not going to get too near the deer because, you know. We're gonna respect that that they're wild animals and that they have, you know, pokey things in their heads. But hopefully you can see the deer. They're fairly tame in that I haven't heard any stories about them like attacking people or anything like that. But I obviously wouldn't feed them or interfere with them. But yeah, it's really beautiful that when it's sunny, I mean, it's, it's lovely right now, but often the deer will lay on people's graves in the sun and just enjoy the, you know, warm earth. And so, when, if we're going to talk about, you know, death, if I could be buried anywhere, it would be here, which is not possible. Um, I don't even know if there's spaces here. Oh, here's what I mean about the markers that direct you where to find something. Um, I don't even think there's spaces here, and even if they were, they would be so expensive. But I really love the idea of being buried somewhere where a deer will just come and sun itself. I think that's pretty lovely. Did you find it on the map, hun? Yeah, I thought it was over here. So, let's take a wander over. As far as I know, the staff here, the caretakers, um, clear off Emily's grave quite frequently because, because people leave so many little offerings all the time. And so, Painted rocks, paintbrushes, little statues. Oh, look at the beautiful snail. Oh, wow, okay. Someone, someone has, I'll show you the stone there, Emily Carr. Someone has recreated some of her paintings on rocks and put them there. Aren't those stinking beautiful? So amazing. If someone left a cigarette, a little tobacco offering there, I like that. Um, 
there is an Emily Carr. Um, it says, dedicated in memory of Emily Carr. Dear Mother Earth, I think I have always specially belonged to you. I have loved from babyhood to roll upon you, to lie with my face pressed right down onto you in my sorrows. I love the look of you and the smell of you and the feel of you. When I die, I should like to be in you uncoffined, unshrouded, the petals of flowers against my flesh and you covering me up. And I love that because one of the things I really do not appreciate about about death practices in North America are that you have so few choices. I, again, I'm gonna talk about death here, so I think it's such a waste of our body to be cremated in that we should nourish something else to grow. So I love that there, is it Sweden? One of the Scandinavian countries is talking about these practices of basically planting people in pods that grow into trees. And I think that is phenomenal. And I wish we had that here and that is what I would wish for. But the real deal is, I just, I don't wanna be a burden to people. So do whatever I guess is easiest at the time because I'll be done with this body at that time, but I, I agree. I don't like the idea of being embalmed and then put in a coffin. Like, what are we preserving me for? Let something eat me. Let, let the worms and the bugs and the whatever else go at me. That's, the earth sustained me, so. Anyway, I really, really love walking around here. I used to talk to Neil about this place and say, oh, I really want to go back to Ross Bay Cemetery. And I'm pretty sure he thought I was a bit nuts, but I mean, he knows I am anyway, and I like cemeteries in general. But then when we came here for the first time, he was sort of, I think, a little more understanding of why some would want to come here because it is very park-like, which is maybe different to some of the cemeteries, some of the cemeteries that he would have been in, like in Ireland. Um, but there are, there's picnic tables here, there's benches, there's deer, there's public washrooms, there's trails, people run and walk through here for exercise. And then I'll just, over here there's a lot of like tall uh, monument sort of headstones. I'm sorry if you hear the traffic a bit, you know, the street is back over there. The park is quite large though, it's just that we're on the edge um, simply because that's where that's where Emily's grave is. Oh, there's the deer again. He's still hanging out over there. I don't know if you can see now. He's hiding a little bit. Behind a gravestone. Sorry, I'm just drinking coffee. I need protein coffee. We had some misadventures for breakfast. Not really misadventures. We just, we picked a place and picked our order and then it turned out their online ordering system wasn't working. And then when I tried calling them, they wouldn't answer the phone. So we didn't eat there. Instead, we got food from our hotel, which, you know, we weren't sure how good it would be, but I'll be honest, I had bagels with cream cheese and capers and, and, um, salmon and tomato and honestly it was really delicious I could only eat half of the bagel but I ate all my salmon I ate all my proteins it was it was really good and Neil had a waffle and sausages and I think they were decent but he was at least pleased that they gave us real maple syrup for his waffles rather than the gloop glop that that our Declan loves which is like the pancake syrup which has never even brushed by a maple tree in its life. I know, that's really snobby. Um, anyway, it's just a preference, right? So, we like the real maple syrup, but Declan likes the, the fake stuff. Should we go over by the deer again, or should we go um, I'll have to do whatever you by like. the monuments? Can you hold my coffee just for one moment? Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
there's a crow calling at us here. He thinks he's the boss. I hope the deer shows up a little bit in the video. Okay, well, let's walk around. Oh, that crow just flew at us and I missed it. You know what? God, birds are so fucking rude. Okay, sorry for swearing, but you know, <clears throat> I swear a lot, kind of. I mean, I really love birds, but I always say they're rude. I probably have told you that before. So it's really huge in here. You can see there's like, it goes on and on into the park. having a fight. There's a lot of wildlife here. I enjoy that. I think that's I think that's a lovely way to use. You know, I know people talk about how cemeteries take up a lot of land and are wasted space, and I don't disagree with that in a lot of ways. Which is really why I like the use of this one, because it's so clearly a place that animals are comfortable coming and finding food and shelter and People use this space again like a park, so it's not it's not just haha, excuse the pun, dead space. Um it's really it's really usable space that people are being active in or finding peace in or just having a nice time. So I really love And I know, I hope I'm talking loud enough for the camera. I think I am. It's pretty close to my face, but I don't want to be shouty. Like, there are some other people walking trails, or as you heard me say, good morning. Yeah, I'm trying to find the deer. That arrived. Oh, yeah, there's a deer over by the road, but it's, it's really far away. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't obviously want to... Yeah, I know. That's the one I was filming already. Okay, so I don't like to be, you know, shouting in general. Um, probably because I'm still pretty shy about talking to the camera sometimes. Okay, I love this tree. Look at it. It is covered in this beautiful, like almost fluorescent looking sort of moss over it so beautiful and I really love too that the caretakers have been sweeping things up and so at random spots you just find these clusters of pine cones that are swept into to one bunch so yesterday I didn't oh my goodness there are so many freaking hummingbirds here I had no idea um, yesterday I was filming some, oh, there's a squirrel. I was filming some sort of, I guess, B-roll footage. Like, I don't even know who am I that I would say I have B-roll footage. Um, but I watch a lot of other people who make videos for YouTube, vloggers, YouTubers, whatever we're calling them these days. And I love that they often will just put music and then have all these little shots of you know, short moments or things that are sort of interwoven into the rest of their video. So, so I wanted to make some kind of video. It'll probably turn into multiple videos about Victoria. Um, this is where I grew up and I certainly do miss it here. And while we're here, we're going to be able to see some family and some friends, uh, some of whom I haven't seen I mean, obviously for a couple of years because of COVID. 
and some who I haven't seen in years and years and years. But as you can see, it's really peaceful, really beautiful here. I love that there's shade and sun. But I'm going to end this video here, and I will take some more video elsewhere, but I want to switch to taking some photographs. So I'll either see you in the next clip or in the next video.